All right. Hello, class. Welcome back. Um, so in the first part of this lecture, part A, we discussed sources of uncertainty. And we started to discuss ways to parameterize this uncertainty, the set of possible systems that we'd like to control. Uh, we had this uh, idea of P in sort of a boldface P. And we're focusing now on how to parameterize that set of possible uh, un uh, uncertain systems. So in the last slide, I talked, I began to talk about parametric uncertainty and different ways to parameterize it. So we had uh, percentage in the multiplicative uncertainty. We had interval and sort of the additive uncertainty. And we had parametric uncertainty. So you can think of these uh, more in terms of the state space, right? A, uh, B, C, and D, where we have some nominal one and then maybe some uh, uh, uncertain one, which is uh, which we don't know. So some A delta, B delta, C delta, and D delta, for example. Okay. So our next task is to pull out the pieces of this, uh, the, this uncertain part, which are truly uncertain, which we know nothing about. So we started talking about those, right, uh, in terms of our deltas. We pulled out that uncertain delta part, and we constrained that to be less than 1. Or we had those, uh, the par in the parametric uncertainty, or the delta i's, uh, which were uh, constrained to be positive and sum up to 1. So we're going to, what we're going to do now is we're going to find a way to represent this in a sort of standardized way. So we can pull all those deltas into uh, their own little block, right? And that'll allow us to do many things. Uh, so it'll allow us to then say things about that block and then uh, do control from exogenous inputs to uh, regulated outputs in a way which is valid for all possible uh, uncertainties in that block. And because uh, that block then can be well, it can be, a, maybe it's a matrix with norm less than 1. Um, maybe it's uh, this parametric case. Maybe it's a system in itself, right? It's uh, in, the, in the case where we have missing states, right? In, either, in any case, we want to pull off the uncertainties out of the nominal system in a way that they can be dealt with in isolation, right? And the way that we do that is through uh, the linear fractional transformation in the same way that we sort of uh, pulled off the controller, which was also sort of an uncertainty, but in, in, in that case, it was a variable. So it, we pulled it off so that we could optimize it in, opti in isolation. And in this case, uh, well, we're not optimizing our deltas because we don't want to find the best one. We want to find the worst one. So it's all sort of the opposite of the controller case, right? So optimize for all as opposed for find the best one. Right. So in a, so because the framework is similar, we can actually pull off a different k down here, right? So we're find the uh, the best k, which works for all deltas, right? That's what we'll do later on, not, not in this lecture, of course. Um, obviously, the, the, it's written in a, in a way which is very similar to what we've already seen. So that's so we had the lower feedback interconnection for control. And now we're going to do what's called the upper feedback interconnection for the uncertainty. Right, and we have lower for control and upper for uncertainty, but they're really structured in many of the in much the same way. Although we'll see in the case of the uncertainties, uh, because we'll have to finesse our models a little bit to get to isolate those uh, those uncertainties. Right. 
so the next couple of slides are just basically a rehash, although it's a little bit more complicated, a rehash of the lower feedback interconnection for control, uh, except it's an upper feedback interconnection and it's for uncertainties. Right. So we've got to, we're trying to isolate the nominal system, which is can be either the four system representation, for system representation. Or later we'll use the nine matrix representation as an alternative, right? So again, we can use either four system representation or nine matrix representation. For now, let's leave it at the uh, four system representation for reasons which we'll see uh, later on. Uh, because, it, it, well, well, we'll see later on. Okay. So, what is the lower feedback in, uh, upper feedback interconnection? Well, it's, it's, we get the equation from the same way we get the lower feedback interconnection. We uh, have an equation for uh, the relationship between P and Q. Right? That is just uh, Q is uh, P uh, acted on by this delta, which may be a matrix or it may be a system. If it's a, just a matrix, then we can write Q of T equals delta P of T, right? For some delta in, in a uncertainty set. If it's a system, however, it has its own state space representation, or we can think of it as it has a transfer function, delta of S, uh, which uh, maybe is in H infinity or something like that. It has small gain. So either case, uh, this, uh, the lower feedback or the upper feedback interconnection applies. So again, because these are systems, they're linear systems, we assume that the, we, we can isolate this as a linear system. Uh, these, uh, the, the algebra of H infinity uh, applies. We, we have to assume, of course, that the deltas are in H infinity. If they're just matrices, then it's easy. Uh, if they're unmodeled dynamics, presumably there are states, and that's also a linear system, so it's also easy. But in any case, it's, uh, it's an algebraic representation. So we have a, a relationship between this signal and this signal. Again, not as a function of time, but right, signal to signal. Uh, for the, uh, the, the nominal system, of course, we have the same two sets of matrices we had before, uh, P and, and Z. Uh, P is, of course, the thing that's going to the uncertainty. Uh, it was Y in the lower feedback, and this was U. But now we've replaced it with P and Q. Right. So before it was y, and then this was uh, u. Right. But uh, sorry, no. Uh, sorry, that's that's not u. That was u. In any case, so we approach the problem from the same uh, angle, right? Uh, sorry, we try and eliminate that uh, that interconnection, right? So we solve for q. Well, it's delta p, and then we sub subs in what what is p? Well, that goes in there, and we get this equation here. Uh, we then uh, move Q to the other side. We get the I minus uh, delta M inverse, and then we can isolate Q as a function of W. So we've eliminated Q now in terms of W. And we then plug that into our expression for Z, right? This uh, expression for Q into Z, right? And we now have the closed loop interconnection uh, for Z as a function of W. Okay. In this... Uh, this, uh, this formula, right, this is the upper star product, the upper feedback interconnection. It has its little symbol here, which we should be familiar with now. The only difference is that it had the bars on the top of S. And that's how we know it's the upper feedback interconnection as opposed to the lower feedback interconnection. Remember the lower one, right, that was 1, 1. This is 1, 2. This is 2, 2. Uh, the delta actually moved from there to there and there to there. And this was a two one, right? In the in the up, in the lower feedback interconnection. But now we're the upper one, so right. Let's erase those bits. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the upper feedback interconnection. That's uh, that's what happens when you close the loop. So then the question is, how do we take this this bit right here and relate it to those models of uncertainty? So parametric and polytopic, focusing on parametric. Okay. 
how do we translate those deltas, right, which was the delta 1, delta M, delta C, delta uh, K, into uh, something that looks like that. So uh, in, when we were talking about that parametric uncertainty, when we introduced it, uh, we were talking about it in terms of a state space model. Remember, we had uh, y or uh, we had something like uh, x double dot equals uh, one over m, or k over m uh, uh, x, and there was a negative sign there, negative k over m x minus c over m x dot um, plus f over m u or w in this case. So because this is state space, uh, it makes sense for us to try and think of our equations also in terms of state space, because that's sort of a natural formulation. If this was unmodeled dynamics, uh, we would stick with the, uh, the, the system representation. Um, but because we're doing parametric uncertainty, we're going to focus for now on the state space. So uh, unmodeled dynamics would be, uh, we would stick with, with the four, four system representation. Right. Uh, okay, so here's our nominal system, nine matrix representation. Remember what it is. Uh, here, however, right, we've got a little bit of a problem because uh, it's not quite the way we want, right? Because uh, uh, we've got the, uh, the, the first uh, connection here from Q coming in there, and the exogenous input is now on the bottom as opposed to the top, which was where, so this used to be, uh, that used to be U of T, and this used to be Y of T, right? So the, the positions have sort of swapped. Right, from the uh, lower feedback interconnection. Okay. So, uh, however, right, uh, that that's not a, a terrible problem. Uh, we can uh, we can actually swap these positions here and do the uh, the upper feedback interconnection solving again for Q as we mentioned earlier. Uh, we can come up with the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the feedback interconnect the state space representation of this feedback interconnection. Now, if you remember what S of M delta was for optimal control, right? If delta was anything other than a matrix, if delta was a system, remember A, K, B, K, C, K, D, K, all that stuff, right? Then that, uh, well, in the lower feedback interconnection, this was some horrible nonlinear function of A, K, B, K, C, K, and D, K. So we're going to try and avoid that A because, right, we don't really know what A, K, B, K, C, K, and D, K are here, right? In the case of unmodeled dynamics, they could be anything, right? So it doesn't really make sense for us to try and uh, do the whole uh, feedback interconnection in the case where we have unmodeled dynamics. And so for, we're going to focus here on the, the parametric uncertainty case. So this is uh, par parametric uncertainty. And so because it's parametric uncertainty, it comes about by uh, you have a delta which, mul which multiplies uh, some particular signal, right? So if we go back a couple slides here, right, um, those, uh, uh, the, the, the uncertainties say, for example, this delta, right, that delta shows up here multiplying x, right, or y actually in this case. And so it makes sense that, right, our uncertainty just models one of the signal, multiplies one of the signals, and then gets fed back into the, into the system. Right. So this is, uh, this is how we're going to, to model these parametric uncertainties. Uh, multiplication by some particular signal, which we'll then define uh, using these, these matrices here. Right, so delta. Well, delta, what is our delta in our case? 
it'll typically be something like, um, say, delta M, delta K, delta C, something like that. A, a diagonal matrix because they're sort of not correlated. If they were core, uh, if they were correlated together, we wouldn't have something in these off-diagonal matrices. But because they're all uncorrelated, they 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 have a diagonal structure to them. Uh, in any case, you, uh, you if you close the loop on this lower feedback interconnection, now assuming that our uncertainty is just multiplication by a matrix, things get a lot simple. This corresponds to the state feedback case. So if you remember what the closed loop in the, of the state feedback uh, case was, well, this, this was the closed loop system, right? Of course, this is the upper feedback interconnection. So this is our new A closed loop, B closed loop, D closed loop, C closed loop, right? Uh, the only complication, of course, is that you got this inverse. And actually, this is useful because often our, param our parameters come in the denominator, right, as like one over mass. We had that earlier. You see that showing up. Uh, so we can actually uh, parameterize this uh, in the same way we, we did before, uh, directly in terms of sort of this nominal system and then this uh, way in which the, the uncertainty comes into the system through the D matrix, which we have to choose appropriately. Uh, and then, uh, of course, gets model gets multiplied by uh, these matrices here, right? So this is uh, this is the sort of uh, this is our parameterization of the system matrices that we can represent in uncertainties. This is our set of uncertain uh, system matrices. And then the real chore becomes taking that, uh, you remember the, uh, the, mat, the uncertain mass spring, and putting it in this form, right? So how to put a given system in the form. And that's really the hard work that comes in here. So that's, uh, that's what we'll be trying to address. So first, let me, uh, let me uh, consider uh, uh, what kind of uncertainties these can represent. Right. So what do we have here, right? We've got uh, this feedback interconnection. Now where delta is a matrix, remember, this is a matrix. The MI are all matrices, right? And, uh, and uh, because there's no dynamics in the uncertainty, per se, where we haven't modeled it in any way, as delta is being time varying, uh, really that closed loop interconnection is, is a matrix itself, right? Because I mean, so, we had this. The, the set of uncertain systems, right, is a matrix in feedback with another matrix and another matrix and another matrix, right? So this is really des describing uh, feedback of static matrices, right? So if we look at sort of our sta that state space representation, then we can actually, right, close the loop on, uh, on these signals uh, without actually forming any dynamics. So we can treat all of these M's as, as matrices, not subsystems here. So that, say for example, if, uh, if we replace Z here with uh, X dot, and, uh, and Z of T, for example, or uh, what did I call them? Yeah, Z of T, for example, right? And we want, we want to write out X dot of T equals, um, uh, uh, we have a given representation of what, of what this, the model that we we're looking for is, right? Uh, then we can close the loop individually, right? And find an expression for X dot 
Z of T. In terms of uh, here, we can expand W and make that X of T, uh, W of T. Right? So that actually we're looking for this matrix here. We're looking for the matrix uh, representation of our dynamics. Uh, so for example, um, let's see, I've got it here somewhere. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, so say for example, right, we have that, uh, that mass spring system right here, and we express it in terms of its normal A matrix. And we would like to, right, write add some uncertainty to these parameters, right? And we have a model for those uncertainties, right? Right? So we, we plug that in, all those uncertainties into here, here, and here. And how do we choose those M21, M12, and M22 such that This, uh, this, this, this linear upper fractional transformation is the desired matrix. So we're actually we'll handle this in parts. We'll we'll address each of those uncertainties separately, and then we'll sort of build up from there. Um, so again, right, we've got the lower feedback and and the upper feedback interconnection here. Uh, mostly, we'll be of course focusing on the upper feedback interconnection, right, where we've expanded these uh, to be X and W of T. Right? So we'll be looking for these M's, which are matrices, so that our uh, the, the closed loop uh, system has the desired form. This is our uncertain A delta, uh, B delta, C delta, D delta, plus our nominal system, of course, A naught, B naught, C naught, D naught, plus. So we want it to have this form. Right. Oh, sorry. Um, went way too far. Hit end. Uh, all right. Uh, wait. No, no, no. All right. All right. All right. Calm down. All right. Okay. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well, uh, let's uh, let's break it down. Um, so for example, okay, here we go. Uh, we've got our uh, our nominal system, right? There's that uh, uh, the 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 x and w there, and uh, if we choose this to be m two uh, two is m one one, m one two, m two one, right? Uh, then, right? If we uh, if we write that in terms of the uh, if we close the lower feedback interconnection there, uh, then we get uh, this matrix here where these P's, right, are just the blocks that we got there, right? Or actually, I guess I'm calling them P's here, not M's. All right, so we just plug this matrix in there. Uh, that one goes there. Uh, that one goes there. And that one goes there, right? And then if you do that, of course, you get back to, right, you get back to this. Right? You recover that. Right. So let's handle this in isolation, right? Because it's unclear. I mean, this 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 can represent almost any form of uh, rational uncertainty, but that's that's you know not very helpful if you're actually trying to construct what those uh, those p matrices or m matrices in this case are. Right. So let's consider a couple individual cases. Uh, specifically, we'll first address additive uncertainty. Uh, then addressed uh, multiplicative uncertainty and show that how we do these wiring diagrams. Right? So suppose you just have a, have, have a form of, of additive uncertainty in this case, uh, where you've got a nominal system P0 or a nominal closed loop system, let's say. Uh, so maybe A0, B0, C0, D0. And then you want to add uh, an uncertain block to it. Right? Uh, where here, right, we don't have any weighting matrices, no weighting here. Um, lots of weighting, but no weighting, if you get my drift. We could add an eta here if we wanted to. Um, in any case, uh, so 
for this class of additive uncertainty, if we choose our other, um, uh, if we choose our, uh, well, actually, this, I'm, I'm, I should make that M naught. If we choose our, uh, our our four matrices to in this way, right? So this was M11, uh, M12. Sorry, these are P's really. Uh, M21, right? Then uh, if we close a loop on this uh, uh, on this upper feedback interconnection, get the upper star product, right? Then we this uh, this M22 goes to zero. Uh, this M12 becomes identity. Uh, the M11, oh sorry, uh, that doesn't that goes to the nominal system. This goes to zero. Sorry. Uh, so this all just becomes identity. Uh, there's the delta there, and this is identity. So we get right that uh, uh, the additive uncertainty we get we just get the additive uncertainty the nominal system here plus delta times w right plus delta times w we could expand that right if we didn't make m21 identity we could have m21 delta m12 here uh, or if, say for example uh, we had a, a weighting factor eta there. A to M, uh, that would actually that could go into either of these two cases, but uh, it would make more sense to put it here in eta here. Yeah. So we can. This is the. This is. Uh, w this is a way to get uh, the additive uncertainty case through the upper feedback interconnection, although it's relatively straightforward, not very complicated. Uh, multiplicative uncertainty or uh, percent error, right, is handled in a similar manner. Uh, so uh, here's our nominal system, M0, that's M22, M0. Um, and then we get, again, M11 is zero, so this whole thing disappears. Uh, so we can ignore that. And then we have delta, and M12 uh, here is, uh, is M0, right? So we, we replicate M0 there. And then we get M21 is just identity here, so we get uh, the uh, multiplicative uncertainty the nominal system, that's M0, uh, plus, this is just identity in our case, uh, delta times the nominal system. Now, if we wanted to put a weight here in front of delta, we could just add a weight there in front of there, and we, we get the case of multiplicative uncertainty. So again, right, uh, two different ways of, of constructing these, uh, these feedback interconnections. In this case, right, no dynamics or the dynamics are here, but we're just not paying attention to the x dot z. Um, and of course, uh, if, if you wanted to do, although I don't list it here, uh, if you wanted to do, say, 1 over, um, say, uh, 1 plus delta, um, then what would you do, right? Uh, 1 i plus delta inverse, right? You would just make m11 equals to identity. Uh, this um, uh, equal to identity, and uh, well, you'd actually you would have to uh, um, uh, choose m so that this delta disappears. Uh, we'll talk about how to do that in in, in, a, in a minute. Um, but you can see that the uh, the the one plus uh, delta here right goes into the denominator, so you can get uh, rational denominators as well. Okay, so we're back here now to our uh, spring mass system. Right? And so let's try and construct a, an LFT uh, for our spring mass system, isolating the sources of, uh, in this case, we're using multiplicative uncertainty, so percent error. So uh, let's take a look at this. Well, first of all, I'm going to cheat a little bit just to make life easier. Uh, I'm going to choose our states uh, well, this one's obvious, right? Our first state is, uh, is just y. I'm going to choose our second state uh, in a way that's a little bit, makes life a little bit easier. I'm going to choose our second state to be not just y dot, uh, but m times y dot. And that'll allow us to sort of separate out our, our parameters. Right, so. right, because then, right, when we get uh, uh, y double dot, 
that is uh, equal to uh, x2 over m. So x2 dot over m. And so if we write that equal to uh, negative c y dot minus k over m y plus f over m, uh, then uh, when we multiply through by the m's, uh, they, these these m's cancel, and uh, and then uh, we can we, we get the, the dynamics actually in a re relatively simple manner. Uh, I, I think there's a typo that should be c over m. Uh, that so that uh, that one over m also disappears. So okay, now we've got uh, uh, our, we've defined those two states. We write down our uh, state space matrix uh, without the uncertainties, and now we plug in for these 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 sources of uncertainty. In uh, here, we're using uh, k equals k naught one plus eta k delta k. So how do we construct the uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 upper feedback interconnection such that our uh, dynamics are with the uncertainties in them uh, is represented as the LFT of this system um, with a uncertainty where that is delta m delta C and delta K, right? Actually, it's the other way around, K and C. Right. How do we define the C's and the B's and the D's and the A? Right. Well, um, I've written down the answer here, but I'll go through the derivation of the answer in the, in the next few slides. Um, before doing it, though, um, I think I will... No, I'll just I'll just go through it because it's not that bad. Uh, I'll just go through the example. Okay. So, right. So here's our uh, here's our uh, our nominal dynamics, right? So here's here's how we representing our dynamics. Uh, if we take that uh, those equations and we write them out. Uh, here's our, our nominal system. We write down those equations. Uh, here is our, uh, uh, our weights, right, that come through Q. Q is uh, delta M, delta C, delta, or delta K, so delta, delta C, uh, times uh, the output, which is P, P of T. Right. So if we close this loop, Right. If we write down this equation, plug it in for here, and we write take this equation and we plug it into here, right, uh, and then we uh, we form this uh, this feedback interconnection where these uh, matrices A um, are defined on the are those like defined on the previous slide, right? So this is uh, a one a naught a uh, b two B1, and so forth, right? Uh, then we find that the closed loop system uh, comes out to be the uncertain system that we were looking for. And how, do we, how did we choose these, right? Because it's not obvious, right, how we chose them at this point. Um, and I'll go through that uh, in, in just a minute. Um, but as a general rule for how, how one would choose this, right? Uh, we can uh, we can take uh, this uh, form here, where if we make uh, p11 this diagonal term, right? If we have uh, uncertainties in each of the parameters, right? Uh, then we can take uh, the nominal systems and we can separate out each of those parameters using those the individual LFTs that we got for additive and multiplicative uncertainty and apply them here, right? So we have a, a summation of our nominal systems and each of those LFTs, those individual LFTs. Right. So we would say, uh, construct one of these for 
for uh, delta M, one of these for delta C, and one of these for delta K using the formula for additive uh, uncertainties that we, we talked about uh, on, the, on the previous slides. However, um, that general formula is a, is, is, is a little bit complicated. And so I'm going to take a very brief break and then come back and go through an example of how we, we put these things together uh, in practice. So I'm just going to take a quick pause here, break, and come, be right back.